I'm Mitch Marks with HBK. Uh, HBK is a provider of test and measurement equipment for those of you who don't know. Uh, and today we'll be looking at power measurement, electrical power measured quickly and safely, but without EMC issues. So this is a, a pretty revolutionary concept we have um, that, that we think we'll enjoy or you'll enjoy, especially if you have issues uh, with electrical noise in your power measurements. Um, quick agenda. So we're going to start off with um, electric powertrain and power measurements. Uh, we're going to look at the typical approach with conventional power analyzers. Um, and then some of the issues, wiring, um, wiring problems, various problems, and then some industry trends like increased voltages and switching frequencies. Probably more appropriately, switch rise times. Um, and then we're going to look at a new approach, and this is a, a release of a new HBK product. Um, going to go through the concept. It's a fiber optic based concept. Um, the simplification of wiring is incredible. The reduction of EMC issues is fantastic. Um, high is safety. You know, safety is not sexy, but safety is important. Uh, and then, um, you know, just the, the speed of measurement needed. Um, and last, we'll go through some summary and conclusion. So electric powertrain and power measurements. Um, you know, here's our, our traditional electric powertrain. We have our battery, our inverter, our motor. Uh, any of you who do testing are familiar with this. Those of you who are not so close to testing, you might not be. Um, but we're measuring, you know, DC electricity. We're measuring AC electricity into a power analyzer, maybe a oscilloscope, maybe a variety of instruments. At HBK, we have, we have one box for all of those. Uh, then you're potentially measuring accelerometers, microphones, um, torque, speed, CAN bus. And, and these slides are just going to repeat that. You know, so we're measuring voltage and current at the DC. We're measuring voltage and current, high frequency coming from the inverter, torque and speed to get machine efficiency. Um, we're probably measuring some temperatures, so winding temperatures, battery inverter temperatures, very important for the losses of the motor, uh, vibration, microphones, um, CAN bus. And that's coming back to an automation PC. That's coming back to a measurement instrument. We're viewing that. So there's a lot of measurements, and, and as we can see, there's a lot of cabling. There's a lot of different types of sensors. There's a lot of different types of cables. There's digital buses. There's analog signals. There's digital signals. There's um, you know, millivolt per volt signals. There's, there's charge-based signals. Um, so there's a lot going on. And we want good measurements, and we want time-aligned measurements, and we want all that, that headache to go away. So typical approach to power analysis. Well, um, we're, we're kind of primarily looking at some of the infrastructure issues today. So in our traditional power analyzer, we have, you know, a current measurement from our DC, we have a voltage measurement from our DC, we have three current measurements from our um, inverter, three voltage measurements from our inverter, and these current measurements are going to a CT power supply. So high accuracy current sensors need a power supply. So we have Four cables going to the power supply. We have another four cables going back to a power analyzer, data recorder, whatever you're measuring it to. Possibly multiple instruments. That is one of the benefits of HBK before we talk about new stuff. Is that one instrument can do the acts of many. So figure that in some other setups this might go to multiple instruments. But we've got eight cables for current. We got another four for voltage. And these are carrying high voltage all the way from the measurement to the instrument. Uh, and then we have some sort of uh, measurement, whether it's a frequency, whether it's an analog coming back from torque and speed before we get to the to the um, the gearbox and potentially another torque and speed after that. This is then coming back to some sort of automation system. And these are typically all copper connections. These are typically all cables. These are typically all safety hazards and, and, and noise sources and EMCs and antennas, and all of this stuff. But there's a lot of cables. And we haven't even talked about accelerometers, microphones, thermocouples. So this is clean cabling. This is like ideal. This is the best case scenario. We have these nice cable runs. But what's reality? You know, anyone who's stepped into a test lab uh, knows that it can get like this very quickly. On the left, we have actually one of our instruments um, wired up where we have loops of wire, we have different boxes for temperatures, we have copper connections everywhere, we have power supplies stacked up, there's high voltages. Um, it's, it's, it's a, in English we would say it's a rat's nest. Um, you know, it's, 
just everything is all together. And, and there's so many cables and there's so many different measurements that this can really easily happen, especially in an R&D setting where you're trying to move fast. And nothing about this screams good measurement. Um, even if we just look at the current sensors, you know, we have our voltages coming in. Uh, we have our bus bars that are carrying the current going through the current sensors. We have the layout of the current sensors. We have these cables coming back. We have these cables routing from the current sensors. We have these grounding plugs everywhere. I mean, I look at this and we're going to look at this in a moment. I just see a lot of sources for bad measurement, a lot of sources for safety issues, a lot of sources for electrical noise. We got to consider loops of cable like this are antennas. So what are problems with this typical cabling outside of that, that really awful picture I just showed? Well, dangerous voltages. We got to remember these battery voltages are going up to a few hundred volts. So we have safety at the measurement, safety at the inverter measurement, but also these cables are carrying that high voltage and it's coming to your power analyzer. And God forbid you have some sort of short or grounding issue that could get to your computer, that could get to you. Um, so there's there's high voltage all the way through. So you really need to make sure all of your equipment is cat rated before you even start. But still, things can happen that are not just uh, the instrument. You know, people step on stuff. Stuff gets hot. Stuff melts. All these awful things when you have that that rat's nest where cables can create safety hazards uh, because there's high voltage coming back to the instrument. EMC, this is this is my personal you know, uh, uh, terror. I have nightmares about this from when I was in industry where we have you know these cables coming from the current sensors to the CT power supply. The, these high voltages, these inverters switching very quickly kick off a ton of EMC. This gets onto that measurement cable, it's getting to the power supply, it's getting back to the instrument. But also we have these voltage cables running. Uh, we have other instruments, we have other things in the room. These are not usually well grounded, well isolated rooms. So these four cables coming from this power supply to the analyzer are also picking up EMC. And God forbid you bought your cables too long and you coil them, now you have an antenna. Torque and speed, these are also, you know, again, cables that people buy too long. Even if it's a digital signal, you know, they wrap them up and they get signal drops. They get all kinds of nasty stuff happening because they're picking up EMC from this inverter. That's super high electromagnetic conduction. And let's look back at my 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 rat's nest, my awful um, setup. We have antennas, antennas in the coil, antennas everywhere. We have EMC getting kicked off from the inverter. We have EMC issues up in the cabling. We have grounding loops that are just being created absolutely everywhere by mismanaging cables, by, by not laying things out, by not placing things correctly. So ground loops, EMC, antennas, high voltage everywhere. And again, just wiring one thing backwards, wiring one thing incorrectly, one cable is bad, and you have a lot of safety issue for the equipment, but also for the users. So just something to consider, like the these setups require really good cabling for measurement quality and for safety. So that, that's kind of the current setup. Now let's look at some industry trends. And, and this is where I talked about those antennas. I talked about that EMC. What am I? What do, what do, what do I mean? What do I mean? So I, I like to come back to base equations. This is the most math you'll ever see me use. And we have this base calculation for current in a capacitive system. So this is current equals capacitance, so how much of a capacitor there is, times the change in voltage over the change in time. So current equals C dV dt. If I have a big voltage changing quickly, I will have a high current for the same capacitance. So our battery voltages are increasing, just industry trend. Um, so we have an increase in dV. When we're turning that inverter on, this is all about the inverter. We turn that inverter switch on, we go from zero to a larger V. So our DV is increasing. We also have to worry about high voltage safety. Um, we also have higher measurement ranges that are needed to get an accurate measurement. So these are other things, but, but we have this increase in V. So we have a higher DV. There's a big trend for uh, wideband gap switches. You know, an automotive silicon carbide seems to be 
you know, really taking over. Gallium nitride also is, is laying in wait. Um, and these switches are fast. They have a really, really, really short rise time. That means they turn on very quickly in the order of a handful of nanoseconds. So what this is telling me is that my DT is decreasing. Increase in dV, decrease in dT. This is telling me that for whatever capacitance in my system, my current, my induced current, this is EMC, this is EMI, my induced current on things like my current cables is increasing. So coils of cable, long lengths of cable have an inherent capacitance. So as we increase the speed and the voltage of these signals, even the small capacitances start to look gigantic and we lose signal quality. This is what I what I really want to sink in, that your standard cabling for these new switches, for these higher DC buses, things that worked at lower voltages, things that worked at lower slew rates are now going to appear to be noisy, that EMC is going to be increased. We're going to have lower quality measurements with these new technologies. And, and that's exactly what I described here. We see a big increase in current because my DV increased, my DT decreased for the exact same setup you had. Even if you had the cleanest, safest setup, if you have long cable runs, if you have loops of cable, those little capacitances are going to result in increased measurement noise. So the new powertrain demands are difficult to measure. And I am setting up a whole bunch of problems so I can give you a solution. Yes, 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 I am. Um, so here's our current solution. This is another picture. We have voltages coming directly into a measurement system. We have currents coming to a power supply and another set of cables coming to the power analyzer. High voltage, EMC, all happening here. Torque and speed coming in and then, and then you know, external measurements like CAN bus or temperatures coming in as well. Um, and then, you know, because this device has high voltages coming into it, there's naturally some high voltage safety. What's our proposed solution? How do we solve this issue? How do we help you with that EMC, with that safety? Um, so we have a fiber optic probe um, that we're releasing early next year. Uh, it's very exciting. I, I've, I've worked with it a couple times now. Um, and it's, it's, it's a small box. And the small box will make either four high voltage measurements right next to your inverter, digitize it right next to your inverter, and send it back through fiber optic over light. Light doesn't pick up EMC. Light doesn't pick up EMI. Light doesn't give a high voltage safety issue. So we have this digitization right next to the measurement, safely noise free back to the to the measurement unit. Same thing with the current. We have a little box that will measure four currents and have an optional power supply built in. With the power supply built in, we now eliminate four cables. So we've gone from 12 cables to eight short cables. 12 long cables, eight short cables. We're already simplifying. Current sensors get amplified by the box. They get measured, digitized, boom. Fiber optic. Fiber optic doesn't pick up noise. Fiber optic does not have a safety concern. So you're right next to the measurement, boom. Back to the instrument. All safe, all noise free. This frees up torque and speed. We don't have current cables. We don't have high voltage cables to couple noise to. Boom, that comes in. And then our CAN bus is still copper today. So we're proposing these uh, voltage and current satellites today. The future will be a little different. Um, so this is our proposal. Measure it really close. Have a 10 centimeter cable. Have no coils. Have no noise. Have no high voltages coming back. Make it as safe as possible. So what does this give us? And I'm, I'm just repeating myself now. Uncompromised safety. There's no high voltage coming back to the control room. There's no high voltage coming back to the instrument. There's less chance you cross cables and have a safety incident. Eliminates EMC issues. If your cables are 10 centimeters for voltage and current, you have the world's shortest antenna. You, you, you don't have an antenna. You're not picking up five meters of noise. You're not picking up a loop's worth of cable of noise. You are eliminating capacitance in that cable. So we're lowering our C. Even if our V is up and even if our T is down, we're lowering our C. We're lowering that induced noise. Torque and speed. Uh, 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 excuse me. Um, yeah, high accuracy due to shorter cables. This even gets into, the shorter cables even get into like base physics type stuff. Like we eliminate reflections. 
these silicon carbide gallium nitrate inverters are having reflection issues for measurement. Make the cable shorter, eliminate the reflection issues, raise the accuracy. Integrated CT, we go from 12 to 8 cables. That just makes it simple. 12 long cables, 8 short cables. It is a big game changer. And then we can distribute these at up to 50 meters. So you can have your measurements pretty far from each other, which again, if your measurements were far from each other previously, you had to have all that copper cable, all that antenna, all that noise coming back. Eliminate that um, with the fiber optic. It's amazing. So what does that look like in my animation? Well, here we have um, our measurements. Again, eight, eight short cables to the current measurement, four short voltage cables to the voltage measurement, torque and speed coming into a, a fiber optic probe, and all of that coming back fiber optic. Yes, there's still, still high voltage here. Yes, there's still EMC here, but it's so much shorter. There's so much less capacitance that we have really reduced the risk of EMC and we've eliminated the safety hazards. All right, so what do these actually look like? This is an actual product. Um, we're gonna have a voltage box and a, two versions of the current box, one with a built-in CT, one or a CT power supply, one without. Um, the voltage probes will be up to 2000 volts with five ranges. There'll be five individually replaceable current channels because they are completely differential and isolated. And these will be available in two or 20 mega sample versions. So you can hopefully eliminate your oscilloscope. You can start eliminating instruments. You can start eliminating more cabling and saving costs in the long run. For the current probes, um, similar story, six ranges, plus or minus two amps. Still have to work with the current sensor. Um, individually replaceable, uh, two or 20 mega samples. They will work with voltages as well. And then we have a receiver card for bringing those in. Um, real-time calculations, um, real-time power calculations. Um, this is a really powerful power analyzer and data recorder. Some more details. I'm not going to belabor this. Please look up our website and, and contact me for more information. Um, plus or minus 2,000 volts, extremely accurate for electrical power. We already had high accuracy. It's going to get even higher with um, with the reduced EMC. We have the highest safety ratings you can get. This is the highest stuff you can achieve. Um, two megahertz bandwidth on the uh, on the two mega sample per second, and we'll have higher than that for the 20 mega sample and all the filters you could ever want. Um, similar story, extremely high accuracy on the electrical power, two or 20 mega sample versions. Um, you know, we can input voltage or current uh, and built in power supply that is going to significantly reduce your cabling and make your system that much cleaner. And the long-term goal um, is we are going to have temperatures, torque and speed, uh, noise and vibration all coming fiber optically into the Genesis. We're gonna make the safest, easiest, cleanest setup. You know, you have your voltages and currents come in, then you have one fiber optic cable back. You have your currents coming in, one fiber optic cable back. We're gonna make it really simple. You get all the same automation system from the real-time formulas that you had previously. You're going to have the safety in your control room and then all of that analysis that you already had today in your system. So we are pretty excited. In conclusion, um, you know, this is an optical power analyzer for, for better or worse, that, that's what it is. Um, it's scalable to any channel count. We can go to extremely high channel counts. Voltage, current, and power are all going to be measured extremely accurately. We have real-time buses, plus or minus 2,000 volts, and we can go up to 5 kV with a divider. Um, Built-in power supplies to simplify that cabling and, and extremely high sample rates. Um, what are the benefits of the remote probes? Increased safety, 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 safety. You don't have that high voltage coming directly into your measurement unit. Safety for people, safety for instruments. Increased flexibility. Um, we can distribute these systems wherever you like, up to 50 meters away. You don't have those long cable runs, you're reducing that EMC, that EMI. Uh, mix systems, you know, you can mix voltage and current however you please. You know, lots of currents, lots of voltages, we're agnostic. You can just make lots of measurements. Higher accuracy, less EMC, 
means less noise on your measurement means higher trust means less downtime. Um, and, and you're going to have less noise on the, the torque and speed signals as well. Better results by shorter cables, higher bandwidth, less reflection, less of an antenna, less capacitance, less induced, um, less induced EMC, EMI. And lower operational costs. You're going to have less troubleshooting. You're going to be up and running faster. You're going to have less ghost hunting with your cables. Um, you're going to have more reliable results. You're going to have less rerunning of tests. And, and calibration is actually going to be simpler because you can just calibrate the satellites. So with that, um, I'd like to thank you all. Uh, please find our website. Please reach out to me. Please ask any questions. We are super excited about this product. It is going to be a game changer for inverter measurement because of that reduced EMC EMI. Um, and the added bonus is safety for your whole organization. So thank you. And I look forward to speaking with some of you. Cheers.